Uh, hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So the topic today is uh, meat rabbit versus uh, meat chickens. Uh, this which you see here, this is one of my doors uh, which I keep here on the farm. Uh, this is an American chinchilla and like you can see it has some amazing bunnies and this rabbit has done amazingly well uh, to take care of the bunnies. Uh, you could be watching this video and you're wondering why is a chinchilla giving birth to black bunnies and white bunnies. I crossbred uh, this rabbit with a Dutch male and as you can see I have one Dutch bunny here which is also growing well. Uh, so I will be showing you the the Dutch male uh, which which I used to crossbreed uh, with this uh, giant rabbit here. So let me get back to the topic. Today we will be discussing whether you should be raising meat rabbits or you should be raising uh, meat chickens. Uh, yes, we started raising uh, rabbits uh, three years ago. Uh, that's when we started on our rabbit farming journey. And we started with uh, this one cage. Uh, this one cage has uh, eight rooms. And that was our first cage that was ever built here on the farm. And if you can see also in this cage, we have another giant American chinjira here. Uh, just resting. Uh, most of the time, uh, the bunnies are going to rest in the afternoons. So when you find your rabbits uh, lying down, uh, just know it's resting. So now in three years, we have been able to grow the farm uh, this big. Uh, this is one side of the farm. Uh, the other side of the farm is this other side. So this is how our farm looks like uh, from both sides. So let's get back to the bunnies. Uh, the bunnies are here. I've just pulled out uh, them from the cage uh, to kind of give you a close look at them. Uh, these bunnies are about two months old and they are about to be weaned off from the mother. And then we can give uh, the mother rabbit a few days uh, before we can cross it again. Uh, rabbits are more productive than chicken. Uh, in this, I mean that a rabbit is able to litter up to eight bunnies, but it is going to give you, on average, about six bunnies. Uh, like you can see, uh, these are six bunnies, which this rabbit gave birth to, and it has been able to keep all of them. Like you can see here, you see all the six bunnies in this frame. Uh, that's another key thing with bunnies, that the mortality rate... Uh, with bunnies is going to be very low uh, most especially if your bunnies have survived the first one week uh, it's not like the chickens the chickens will keep dying even after you having them for a week but once your bunnies have survived for a week it's most likely that uh, they are going to survive unless you're having feeding issues you're having uh, hygiene issues uh, if you give them a proper cage uh, made out of uh, a wire mesh floor which allows the urine and droppings to fall through uh, your bunnies are going to thrive like you can see these ones here if you're going to be uh, breeding for meat and you just have a few bunnies you can be able to breed, breed uh, your rabbits at six weeks so six weeks after littering you can go ahead and and recross it now this is the dutch this is my dutch male which i used to breed uh, that's why you see that most of the bunnies came out black uh, this is the dutch male so this is literally the dad for all these bunnies and that's another good thing with with rabbits uh, where they get an edge over the chickens is that the rabbits are, are going to cross themselves and you are able to get uh, new bunnies which is not the case with chicken every time you need to get a new flock of chicken you will have to get uh, them from a hatchery that is near you uh, the grower rabbits are going to reach their processing a uh, weight of about five pounds at around 12 weeks uh, this is also subjected to uh, the type of feed that you're feeding them and in which amounts that you give them but most of the time if you do proper feeding and we've done videos about how you can feed are your bunnies for the best growth uh, so you can check out that video we will make it the end card uh, at the end of this video so that you are able to transition to it but basically the rabbit is going to eat 
uh, 100 grams of feed in a day. Uh, so you can choose to do uh, 60 grams in the morning and uh, 40 grams in the evening. Or you do uh, 60 grams of pelleted feed. You must give unlimited access to hay to your bunnies. Because the hay is going to make your rabbits to drink water. And when your bunnies are drinking water, it's also going to help them with gaining weight. So guys, uh, these are checkers. Uh, if you know a checkered giant, uh, this is a litter from my checkered giant doe, uh, which I have here on the farm. And these are prolific uh, breeders. Now the other thing. Uh, the thing where uh, rabbits get an edge over the chicken is going to be the feeding cost. You know, with chicken, you have to feed them a grain from the first day. And not just any grain. Uh, there's some starter feed that you have to give uh, to your chicken for the first uh, weeks of their life. And this is very expensive. If you're even keeping another flock of chicken, they can't share the same feed with your existing chicken it has to be a brand new a uh, feed uh, called the starter feed and sometimes this is highly priced so you find that uh, it makes it very uh, expensive for you to raise uh, these meat chickens however with rabbits uh, the rabbits are going to be nursing on the mother for the first uh, literally three weeks so the three weeks of their life you're not putting in uh, any feed input you're basically feeding one rabbit and then the one rabbit is going to nurse for you the six or five bunnies that you will have gotten in that litter. Now, it means that uh, your rabbit, you're going to only feed it for about uh, two and a half months and then it is ready for processing. So you're going to find it that it's going to be cost effective for you to raise uh, bunnies as compared to are raising chickens if you plan to uh, hatch your own eggs uh, if you don't want to be at the mercy of of the hatchery to receive your new chicks uh, then you may think of getting uh, an incubator because you will need one uh, that's if you're not having a uh, brooded chicken uh, but even if you do it's going to be very difficult for you to raise uh, big amounts of chicken if you're just going to let uh, your chicken uh, naturally brood uh, or incubate the eggs. So that's an expense and I remember this incubator you're going to just be using it a few times in a year so you're just having money uh, seated there. But the other thing also is that uh, with brooding chicken then you have to provide a brooding environment providing a heat source now, if you're providing heat source, that is going to eat up in your electricity bill and electricity is not cheap uh, nowadays. So all that cost, when you put it in and you compare it to the rabbit, which uh, it doesn't require all this, uh, the mother will literally take care of uh, the bunnies. You are better off uh, raising uh, rabbits. Uh, this is my checkered uh, male. Uh, this is afternoon. It's chilling. Uh, that is the male which gave me uh, these bunnies which I'm displaying for you here. Uh, now let's talk about uh, feed conversion. Uh, the rabbits are going to give you a better uh, conversion of feed to meat. Uh, you're going to get about a 3 to 1 uh, ratio. Uh, that's uh, 3 pounds of feed to 1 pound of meat. Uh, that's if you're feeding um, a 19% protein feed. Uh, if you're going to be feeding uh, or free-ranging your rabbits, uh, the conversion is going to be about a 5 to 1 uh, conversion rate. That's uh, 5 pounds of feed to 1 pound of meat. But if you're going to be raising your bunnies on free range, you're literally putting in a very little input. Or if you're just raising your rabbits, on grasses that you're collecting from your backyard, uh, it is not bad if you're going to be having about uh, five pounds of feed to one pound of meat uh, because your input will be uh, very low. Now, the other point is that uh, rabbits are not labor intensive. Uh, as you can see from my setup here, this is the setup which I have. And this whole farm is being 
uh, fed by one person in the morning and one person in the evening. So you don't really need to spend the entire day here. And also for the cages, we are doing uh, self-cleaning cages, uh, which allows the droppings and the urine uh, to fall through. The droppings will fall through to this uh, manure collection point. And our rabbit floor is made out of, out of mesh. So, so that everything, as you can see, will just go through. So all you need is to just come and clean here. Uh, you can do twice a week and you're not going to be having any issues. The water, you do an automated water system. Uh, so the rabbits will get water through the nipple system, uh, which you connect to a reservoir and that's it. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of hours uh, look, taking care of the rabbits and uh, that way I feel that uh, a rabbit is a better animal for you to raise if you're looking out to provide uh, meat for your family. Uh, the other thing is going to be the ratio of meat to bone. You're going to realize a high meat to bone ratio when it comes to rabbits other than you would do with chickens. Of course, uh, bunnies are very adorable uh, animals, but guys, if you into this uh, for meat, uh, you will have to be uh, processing these bunnies, however uh, nice looking they are. So because the end game is that we are all looking for meat uh, to provide to our families. Uh, if you are not into uh, eating meat, uh, you will forgive me and forget uh, I talked about this point. But that's the reality. If you're looking out for meat, uh, you will have to call these bunnies so that you're able to get that meat. Uh, the other point is that uh, rabbits are more clean and very quiet as compared to chickens. The rabbits produce solid and dry uh, droppings. Uh, this is how their droppings are going to look like. As you can see, I can handle them because these are solid and dry. And most of the time, uh, if they are not wet, uh, they will not smell. So that's how easily the rabbit droppings can be uh, collected. And this, you can use it straight away into your garden to improve your soils, uh, which is not the case with uh, chickens. Chickens have very wet and smelling manure that need to first decompose before you can apply it on your crops. Otherwise, if you do it straight, uh, then it has a chance of burning your crops. Now, the last point, and this is the deal breaker for me, uh, rabbits are very silent animals. We have quite a lot of bunnies here on the farm, but if you don't enter the farm, you cannot actually know that we have all these bunnies here on the farm. So if that is something for you, uh, that you want to have animals that do not inconvenience you uh, in terms of your resting time, and also they do not inconvenience your neighbors, then look into uh, getting bunnies. For me, this is a deal breaker for me because I want to have animals at home uh, which is going to give me my peace to rest and also not have complaints coming from my neighbors. Uh, if you're in a place where they don't uh, allow people to have uh, farms, now this is even very bad for you because it's just one neighbor reporting you and then your farm will be shut down. So if you need to have uh, something at home and you are able to enjoy your time at home, uh, I believe that rabbits is the way to go. So guys, from uh, this video, it's clear that uh, rabbits are the winner here. And if you were just wondering uh, what you should be raising as your meat sauce, I would highly recommend that you go with rabbits. So guys, if you've watched the video this far, please consider subscribing to the channel. Turn on the notification bell. Uh, so that when we upload the next video, you are notified to come and watch with us. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.